All right, so tonight the Trump administration draws a line in the sand when it comes to liberal states aiding and abetting criminal illegal immigrants that pose a significant threat to you, the American people. The Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, he used a news conference today to officially announce that the Trump administration is suing California over their sanctuary state policies that shield these illegal immigrants that commit crimes. Sessions did not hold back. Let's take a look. A refusal to apprehend and deport those, especially the criminal element, of uh, effectively rejects all immigration law. It's a rejection of law. And it creates an open borders system. It's the only way it can be described. And open borders is a radical, irrational idea that cannot be accepted, contrary to what you might hear from open borders radicals. We are not asking California, Oakland, or anyone else to actually effectively enforce immigration laws although we would welcome the positive assistance the majority of jurisdictions in America provide to our federal offices. We would certainly like that. But ICE agents do incredible work every day. They're not backing down. They're not going to be deterred. And we're not going to stop enforcing the law in, in Alabama or California either. Now, President Trump, Jeff Sessions, and the federal government, they are simply standing up for the rule of law. Now, the radical left, they're putting criminal, illegal immigrants before the safety of American citizens. Now, all the Trump administration wants to do is enforce federal immigration laws that are already on the books. It's really that simple. We either in this country, we have law and order or we have chaos. Now, let's say you don't like the laws, then change them. Elect people that will change them. But if you break the laws on the books, you should suffer the consequences. Now, California's officials, well, they don't have to help. They just need to stop interfering. Or in the case of this Oakland mayor aiding and abetting criminal illegal immigrants, well, we'll have more on that disgraceful story and potential crimes of the mayor in just a second. But what's disturbing about all of this is that officials in California, they're now risking your lives because they think protecting criminal illegal immigrants is good politics. They are literally willing to endanger Americans by harboring people that have no reason to be in this country because they think it will win them a couple of extra votes. You have liberal politicians like California Governor Jerry Brown. They don't want to debate the issues because they know the facts and the truth and the rule of law are not on their side. And that's why instead of addressing why his state is shielding criminal illegal immigrants, well, Governor Brown instead, he attacks Fox News. He accuses the federal government of going to war. Really, Jerry? Watch this. This is really unprecedented for the chief law enforcement of the United States to come out to California and act more like Fox News uh, than a law enforcement officer. This is a political stunt. It's more like uh, Fox News and what's going on in Washington. And it's not about the truth. It's not about protecting our state. It's about dividing America. This is basically going to war against the state of California. Uh, the engine of the American economy. It's not wise, it's not right, and it will not stand. Okay, it's not right, but we did invite Governor Brown to come on the show tonight, but shockingly, well, he said no. Now, Governor Brown has no facts to back up this argument, so it's no surprise that he's too gutless to come on the program. Now, liberals in California, you need to answer one simple fundamental question. How does America benefit from criminal, illegal immigrants staying in the country? If you don't see this as a danger that is posed to every American, well, I don't know how I can convince you. What is the upside? What is the reward? Why are you willing to risk and imperil other people's lives? These are criminal aliens. We're not talking about DACA here. Now, people like the mayor of Oakland, Libby Schaff, they sure seem to think so, and that's why the mayor was tipping off criminal illegal immigrants about the ICE raid late last month. And guess what happened? As a result, well, the acting head of ICE says that about 800 criminal illegal immigrants were able to avoid arrest. Is that what Americans really want elected officials to do, to protect illegal immigrants that are criminals? Now, the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, blasted the Oakland mayor earlier today. Let's take a look. So here's my message to Mayor Schaff. How dare you? How dare you needlessly endanger the lives of our law enforcement officers to promote a radical open borders agenda? 
What this mayor is doing is disgraceful, but despite the mayor's actions, I still was able to detain criminal illegal immigrants. Look at the stats about the Oakland area raid. In spite of the warnings, 232 people arrested for violating federal immigration laws. Now, of that 232 arrested, 180 were either convicted criminals, had been issued the final order of removal and didn't leave, or had been previously deported and then returned again to the U.S. illegally because we have open borders. 115 of the 232 had prior felony convictions for sex abuse, weapons charges, and assault. Now, those are the types of people that this Oakland mayor is protecting. Now, of course, Libby Schaff is defiant, defending her lawless behavior, but the Department of Justice is now looking into a possible obstruction of justice charge against her for what she did. Now, keep in mind, if California lawmakers, if they want to continue to obstruct federal immigration officials from actually doing their job, then President Trump should follow through on his threat to pull ICE agents from California. You may remember this. We're getting no help from the state of California. I mean, frankly, if I wanted to pull our people from California, you would have a crime nest like you've never seen in California. All I'd have to do is say ICE and Border Patrol, let California alone. You'd be inundated. You would see crime like nobody's ever seen crime in this country. And yet we get no help from the state of California. All right, when it comes to criminal illegal immigrants, the media, the left, liberals, they refuse to look at facts. And because of this, they are complicit in the harm that these people in the future will cause to American citizens. Now, unlike the left and most members of the media, well, we've actually been down to the border over a dozen times. We have watched firsthand what is going on down there. I've been on horseback, all-terrain vehicles, helicopters, boats. I've seen drug warehouses, tunnels. I've seen it all. When President Trump says we need a wall, he's right. And I don't mind a wall with a door either. In 2014, I sat in on a border briefing with then-Texas Governor Rick Perry. Listen closely. 642,000 criminal offenses committed by illegal immigrants in the state of Texas alone in only a seven-year period. A serious problem. Watch. Criminal aliens have been responsible for about 642,000 offenses, criminal offenses. Uh, you look up there in the top left, sexual assault. There's close to 8,000 victims. 642,000 crimes since in, 2000, since in Texas. In Texas alone? Yes, sir. Over, over 200,000 yes, individuals, their criminal history reflects that they were, they, they were committed over 642,000 crimes. That's the cost of not securing the border. 642,000 crimes created and in, in impacting the citizens of Texas in a seven-year period. Then there's all the statistics that the liberal mainstream media always conveniently ignore. Truth doesn't seem to matter to them. According to the Migration Policy Institute, about 820,000 of the 11 million illegal immigrants in America are convicted criminals, 820,000. The U.S. Sentencing Commission has found that illegal immigrants account for 13 percent of all non-immigration related federal sentences for the fiscal year 2016. Now, this despite the fact that these illegal immigrants, they only make up 3.5 percent of the population, 3.5, 13 percent. And this is important. That number is only dealing with federal sentences. It's much higher if you factor in convictions by state and local governments. Now, according to the latest report from the Government Accountability Office, get this, an estimated 55,000 criminal illegal aliens were in federal prison in the year 2010. In fiscal year 2017, ICE deported over 226,000 illegal immigrants. And also in 2017, over 127,000 of those deported were previously convicted of a crime. And in 2010, the DOJ found that 57 percent of immigration offenders charged in U.S. District Court had prior felony convictions. Now, the facts on illegal immigrants are irrefutable, and that's why the left and the media never talk about them. You've never seen this before, I'm guessing. This is about protecting you, the American people. It's that simple. 
All right, we'll have more on this in a minute. Now, also breaking tonight, we have more evidence, more proof that the FBI lied to that FISA court judge in the original application and three subsequent renewal applications to get a warrant to spy on a member of the Trump campaign, remember, in an election year. And according to a New Yorker report, former British spy Christopher Steele, who put together this phony dossier filled with Russian lies and propaganda, he knew. He knew he was being paid by Hillary Clinton. He knew he was being paid by the DNC just months after he was hired by Fusion GPS. Now, this is significant because according to Congressman Adam Schiff's memo, which references the FISA application for the warrant, the FBI told the FISA judge that Steele was never told about the political motivations behind his work. Also remember, Steele hates Donald Trump also. So the FBI, again, flat out lied. And what we can only assume here is that it was an effort to make Steele more credible as they were omitting evidence to a FISA judge. Now, the FBI, Fusion GPS, remember, they never bothered to verify, corroborate the fake news dossier, which is mandated in FISA law. And by the way, it's part of the FBI's own protocols. And also, the FISA application was denied the first time. But then Steele and the dossier was brought in to put the request over the top. Or to quote former deputy director of the FBI, Andrew McCabe. Remember, he testified, without the dossier, there would never have even been a FISA warrant application. That's how important that dossier was to getting the approval of the FISA court. Now, this scandal is by far the most massive abuse of federal government power in the history of the country. And that's why a second special counsel needs to be appointed like yesterday and the month before to investigate what is severe FISA abuses. All right. Also, finally tonight, new details about how the FBI missed a critical warning sign from the deranged Stoneman Douglas High School shooter, Nicholas Cruz. Now, Congressional Committee Chairman Trey Gowdy, Bob Goodlatte, they issued a press release on key findings from an FBI briefing on the Parkland shooting. Now, it's previously been reported that in January of this year, a friend of the Cruz family called the FBI tip line to report Cruz's disturbing behavior. Well, tonight we have new information about how that FBI agent who answered the call handled it. And according to Gowdy and Goodlatte's press release, after that call warning about Cruz, the person who took the call spoke to a supervisor about what was said. Their conversation was never documented. And at that time, the FBI was able to connect Cruz to a different September call to the FBI tip line. And that's where Cruz made a threatening YouTube comment about wanting to be a professional school shooter. Now, despite that information, the FBI never proceeded ahead with an investigation. The FBI never told local authorities. They never told their field offices about this. And as we've been saying, this entire tragedy, all of it, could have been prevented but there, of course, was a series of gigantic bureaucratic failures. Now, instead of trying to fix the system, correct those mistakes, we should secure the schools like we secured those Hollywood actors and actresses that were on the red carpet on Sunday. Well, the left, the media, predictably, they continue to blame guns, all in an attempt to limit your constitutional right to keep and to bear arms. 